Hello ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to cardiology lectures. I am Dr. Nick Nickham. I have been a cardiologist for more than 30 years in Houston, Texas. We have a YouTube channel where we would like you to please visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel and also bookmark our cardiology lectures playlist where we have more than 80 cardiology lectures. Today let us learn something about EKG, bundle branch, blocks and much more. During this presentation we are going to look at the electrical system of the heart. We are going to analyze the sequence of activation of the ventricles and how these bundle branch blocks occur. Then we are going to specifically look at right bundle branch block and left bundle branch block. After that, we are going to look at uh, fascicular blocks and finally, we are going to look at some differential diagnosis. We are also going to look at some of the causes for bundle branch block and what do these bundle branch blocks signify when we are evaluating a patient at bedside. As I said, I have been in practice for 30 years and most of my presentations are focused towards uh, applying what we see on tests to the patient at bedside. So let us continue. Let's look at the electrical system of the heart which will help us to get a better understanding of what these bundle branch blocks are. As you know, here is the sinus node which uh, generates the impulse which is transmitted through these uh, intranodal uh, connections to the AV node. We have the bundle of His which divides into the right bundle and then Purkinje fibers uh, and eventually it activates the left and the right ventricles. There is also a, what is known as the Bachmann bundle which is supplies the left atrial musculature where, so that both the atria contract at the same time and both the ventricles normally contract at the same time. However, if we get blockage in one of these bundles then Houston we have a problem. On the right side, we have one main bundle, which is the right bundle. But on the left side, but on the left side, we have the left anterior fascicle and the left posterior fascicle. Under certain circumstances, we can just see fascicular blocks or a combination of a bundle branch block and a fascicular block. So that is the anatomy of the electrical system. And let's see how the impulse is propagated through this electrical system. When a sinus node is activated, the impulses travels through the atrial musculature and they create the P wave, which is the atrial electrical activity depicted here in green. And then we have the AB node, the AB bundle, and then the Purkinje system before the ventricles are activated. As a result, the P or interval corresponds to the AB nodal delay. The time taken for the conduction of the impulse through the bundle of His, the bundles and the Purkinje fibers. So that represents the P or interval or the P or interval here. The activation of the ventricle itself, the QRS complex is accomplished through the activation of the Purkinje system to a certain degree and the actual activation of the musculature involving the right and the left ventricles that gives rise to the QRS complex. Then this is followed by an isoelectric uh, segment and after that we have the repolarization of the ventricles which results in the T wave. So most of the bundle branch block features are going to be focused on our QRS complex and some STT changes which are going to be associated with the bundle branch blocks. Here is a diagrammatic representation of what could happen if you block the left bundle or the right bundle. Here is an example of a right bundle branch block. When there is blockage in the right bundle, then the impulse normally traverses through the left ventricular septum which produces the initial R wave and after that the impulse is going to go through the left bundle which is normal. As a result, it activates the left ventricle to start with that gives rise 
to the lateral tall or waves in the lateral uh, chest leads. After the ventricle is activated, the impulse now traverses through the myocardium instead of the electrical system that produces the second R wave which is seen in the anterior chest leads namely V1, V2 and V3. So that's as far as the right bundle branch block is concerned. During a left bundle branch block, we have the initial activation of the septum which produces the R wave. Then the impulse uh, goes through the right bundle branch and the, and the Purkinje system producing a negative deflection. After the right ventricle is activated, the impulse is going to go through the myocardium to the left ventricle which produces this uh, R, S, R prime. The first R is related to the right ventricular activation and the second one is related to the left ventricular activation. So we see a wide QRS complex in both situations because of conduction through the myocardial tissue as opposed to the conduction through the fast pathways of uh, the bundles and the Purkinje system. So this is an overview of how the right bundle branch block and the left bundle branch block look. If you look at in V1 for example, in a right bundle branch block we are going to see an RSR prime pattern with a wide QRS complex of more than 0.12 seconds whereas uh, in the left bundle branch block we are going to see an RSR prime in V5 and V6. These are some of the major differences related to the right and the left bundle branch blocks. Okay, let's proceed. Now here we have a classic example of a right bundle branch block. As we can see, we have an RSR prime here in V1. We have a slurred R wave which is very characteristic of uh, the right bundle branch block we, which we see in the anterolateral leads. For example, 1 AVL V4 to V6. So that's another important subtle point which you may not hear. But nonetheless, it is an important point. So basically we have a RSR prime in V1 along with some downsloping ST segment and inverted T waves. Generally we can see inverted T waves uh, not only in V1 but also in V2 and V3 in many cases. So this is a classic right bundle branch block. Let's look at another example. Here we have another example of a right bundle branch block as you can see. And there is one more subtle thing that is uh, not uh, usually apparent when you see it for the first time and that is the QRS complexes are going posteriorly. We have the right bundle branch block here. In addition, we also have a left anterior fascicular block and left axis deviation. Anytime the QRS complex is more negative than positive, then we are dealing with a left axis deviation. Uh, the impulse is going backwards and to the left. That produces the negative deflection in the inferior leads. That is something we have to differentiate from an inferior myocardial infarction. But in an inferior myocardial infarction, you may not see these initial R waves. That is a clue to differentiate that one from a left axis deviation versus uh, inferior myocardial infarction. So this electrocardiogram has quite a number of features. Again, we have negative deflections here. And this could be lead placement. And I also told you about the slurred S waves that we are going to see in the anterolateral leads. Okay, here's a, a third example of a right bundle branch block. In addition to that, we see 
significant T wave changes and these T waves are fairly deep and they are symmetrical. They may be related to Van der Brand's block but if a patient is coming with chest pain then you worry about uh, ischemic uh, T wave changes superimposed on the right Van der Brand's block. Let's talk about some of the things that cause right Van der Brand's block. Right Van der Brand's block clinically is not as bad as a left Van der Brand's block. Most often we see right Van der Brand's block in patients with atrial fibrillation, hypertension, in patients with anterior myocardial infarction where there is uh, involvement of the septum and we can also see some Van der Brand's block, right Van der Brand's block in some patients with tachycardia. Generally, we don't need to do anything if we are dealing with the right bundle branch block and we can diagnose the presence of an anterior myocardial infarction even in the presence of a right bundle branch block whereas that is not the case in patients with left bundle branch block. Those are some of the features related to the right bundle branch block. Now let's look at uh, a left bundle branch block. As I told you, the left bundle branch block in V5 and V6, we are going to see a slurred QRS complex followed by an ST, downsloping ST and a T wave inversion. That's exactly what we are seeing here. So we have deep S waves, as we said, in the anterior leads, wide QRS complexes in 1, ABL, V4 to V6. This is classic for left bundle branch block. And if you look at the deflection of the QRS complex here in lead 2, uh, it looks like it's isoelectric. So this is not quite left anterior fascicular block. But if these deflections were uh, something like this associated with neg more negative deflections in lead 3 and AVF, then we could be dealing with not only left bundle branch block, but also left anterior fascicular block. Whenever you see a patient with a left bundle branch block, it is more often than not pathological. We usually see them in patients with uh, hypertension or in patients with advanced heart failure or in patients with uh, acute myocardial infarction. One more important finding in this electrocardiogram which I want to point out before we go any further is the left atrial enlargement. The neg negative deflection in the P wave in V1 if it involves more than one small square here which is uh, one small square then it is suggestive of left atrial enlargement. So here we have an electrocardiogram that has left atrial enlargement and left bundle branch block with reciprocal STT changes. Okay, let's proceed further here. Now let's look at uh, some of the minor types of bundle branch blocks and some differential diagnosis. And here is an example of a right bundle branch block and along with that we have a left anterior fascicular block. So this is an example of uh, a bifascicular block. Here we have a similar example here where the negative deflection is more than the positive deflection we see here. As a result, we have a left anterior fascicular, left anterior fascicular block along with right bundle branch block. And if you look at the PR interval, it is more than 0 0.20 seconds. So we have a trifascicular block. This signifies, if you go back to the electrical conduction system I showed you, it has a problem in the left anterior fascicle. There's a problem in the right bundle branch block and there's a problem in the PR interval which involves the AB node, it involves the bundle of His and also the Purkinje fibers. As a result, when you are dealing with triphysical block, you always worry about this progressing to complete heart block. 
Occasionally, we see what is known as the intraventricular conduction delay, which is uh, prolongation of the QRS interval to like 0.11 seconds or longer. Then it doesn't look like a right left right bundle branch block, and it doesn't even look like a left bundle branch block. But nonetheless, there is prolongation of the QRS. QRS interval and in those circumstances uh, it is considered as intraventricular conduction delay which is just a non-specific term to show that there is delay in the conduction of the impulse through both the right and the left ventricles. Here it looks like a left bundle branch block. We got a wide QRS complex in one AVL V5 and V6. Sometimes it may look very much like left bundle branch block, but if you see real sharp spikes like this, then it should immediately trigger that you are dealing with a pacemaker rhythm. There is one more condition that we see sometimes in patients with tachycardia, especially in atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular response. When the rate is slower, you see normal narrow QRS complex, but when the rate speeds up, you can see what appears to be like what appears to be like a bundle branch block. This is a brief overview of uh, the electrical system of the heart, conduction of impulses through this electrical system, activation of the ventricles, how the bundle branch blocks look and what causes them and how you identify them. I hope this has been useful to you and please, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel which is Nick Nickham and also bookmark our cardiology lecture series where we have more than 80 videos for your uh, educational purpose. Until next time, I am Dr. Nick Nickham and thank you so much for watching.